The first track or the first talk is uh, by Molly McKinley. She's a lead engineer product and research development at Protocol Labs. And she's going to talk to us about breakthroughs in the NFT preservation and accessibility. So please give it up for Molly. Hello, everyone. Hopefully, everyone has digested their lunch by now. I'm super excited to chat with you today. How many of you are familiar with IPFS, Filecoin, Protocol Labs? Any of, yeah, hopefully you're using some of them for your NFTs. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the, the key problems that IPFS and Filecoin solve for NFT preservation and accessibility, some of the recent improvements, some of the breakthroughs that are coming in the future that maybe you want to make use of with your NFTs and digital collectibles. Cool. Um, so feel free to follow along with these slides. You can QR code it, and you can see everything. I'm going to go through some of them rather quickly, because I only have 10 minutes. So uh, jump in, and let's go. Cool. So first, talking about three major challenges that NFTs experience in the accessibility preservation space and how IPFS and Filecoin help solve them. So first, secure interoperable addressing. It's super important to make your NFTs accessible regardless of where your data is stored, regardless of how you access the, the data represented in your NFTs. Two, preservation of high value digital assets, making sure that you know, if you address it effectively, you can actually preserve that data over time. And then three, um, certificates of provenance. This is an opportunity that you can use with verifiable storage to actually show how data was first onboarded into a system, preserved over time, and you can prove that the data you initially collected and stored is the same data you know, if you want to represent that, say, in a court of law or something like that. So first, secure interoperable addressing. Um, probably many of you here are very familiar with a problem that plagues many F NFT communities, which is rug pulls. If you use something like a mutable address or an address that's controlled by a central party, then you can end up having the, the initial NFT you thought you bought replaced out from under your feet with beautiful pictures of rugs. Um, and that's not what any NFT collector wants who wants a um, you know, provable record of, of the data that they were buying. IPFS gives you the best of both worlds, secure, immutable addressing, and the ability to store in whatever place you want. So how does this work? Um, if you're using something like location addressing, say you're storing your NFT on dropbox.com, and that's the link you stick into your NFT metadata, then that central owner of that Dropbox account or Dropbox itself as a central entity can swap out the NFT content under the hood from your happy little NFT.storage logo to your evil, malicious NFT storage logo. You as the NFT holder have no control over that because you have no control, no, um, no verifiability in the address that was used. So always use something like IPFS links as the ability to control with this immutable layer what data is being addressed. For OpenSea, you can use things like their freezing metadata feature, which uh, makes sure that you have all of your data persisted on IPFS. You can always check that um, the data you're retrieving is the data you expected. No one can rug pull that data out from under your feet. There's actually some really great guides on this. This is like from a year and a bit ago now, uh, April 2021. Um, but there, there's a, some good blog posts on the IPFS blog. There's some great docs about best practices when using content addressing to make sure that you are pr protected against rug pulls. A notable thing here is that IPFS has no opinion about where you persist and store your data. It just gives you that verifiable link to the data that you're storing. So you can store this on any system you want. You can store it on AWS. You can store it on Filecoin. You can store it on Infura or Pinata or Fleek or Arweave or StoreJ or Sia or whatever, whatever uh, form of storage you want. But with IPFS, you can prove that the data that you're addressing is the data you initially purchased in your NFT. So. When you have that optionality, why not pick many? This gives you the resilience of many different storage networks all together. And this is actually what most groups like NFT.storage do. They persisted across many different forms of storage to make sure that you don't have any single point of failure. Many of these things can go down. Many of them can be inaccessible. You can still fetch and retrieve your content. 
Um, yeah, and this content addressing also helps create user agency. Anyone can also store and host their own data. If your data goes offline from whatever storage system you'd initially chosen, you can spin up your own IPFS node, host your own content. Really recommend, I think there's a couple of folks that have created tools for downloading your own NFT data and hosting it yourself. Highly recommend doing that. Again, more storage, more better. So obviously the storage part matters though. The preservation of digital assets doesn't just mean I have a link to something, but I don't know what. You don't want to have your broken JPEG image be what your NFT points to. Um, you want to be able to reheal links over time if whatever storage mechanism you choose uh, ends up not being a good, uh, good choice for you. You want to be able to verify that the data that you're storing is there over time, not just trusting some third party to do, to do this task for you. Um, and ideally, you want to be able to address across many different storage systems. So um, what this would look like is even if you're using something like an IPFS CID, if you don't f remember to pay your storage bills, you could end up with a file not found. So to avoid something like that, things that have provable uh, like proofs and records that you can check that show that your data is being preserved over time across many different storage systems are a great example. Filecoin offers these proofs of verifiable storage where they are checking and proving every 24 hours that the data that you expect is still being stored. There's a great blog post about this. You want both immutable content addressing and you want long-term persistence of data. You want to make deals with people into the future that you can verify and track that all of your data is being persisted. And you want to do this across multiple different storage systems as well. Uh, enter NFT storage. Awesome tool. Hopefully many people in this room are using it. They have really awesome shiny stickers. I recommend it. Um, but it's a great tool that stores across many different resilient storage systems and allows you to kind of do that, uh, that multiplexing. Um, they have encoded all of the IPFS and Filecoin best practices. They store across, I think they have a copy in AWS, they have a copy in IPFS cluster, they have a copy in Filecoin. I think they also have copies in like Pinata and Estuary and a number of other storage systems. So many resilient storage systems at play and it's free thanks to Filecoin's crypto economics. So if you are an NFT creator and you're not already using NFT.storage, what you doing? I think, uh, I mean, to this point, they've almost got uh, 70 million NFTs uploaded to NFT.storage, um, approaching 200 terabytes of data, um, and trusted by a ton of major players, uh, and still growing pretty fast, which is pretty awesome. They've been around for a little over a year at this point, and it's a great, great tool that you can use to make sure that you encode all those best practices in your work. OK, finally, certificates of provenance. This is actually one of my favorite use cases. Starling Labs is an amazing group um, that's been working on kind of at the intersection of blockchain and media to try and bring the tools and technologies of blockchain to help increase our trust in media. And I think we can all agree that our trust in media is a little low right now. Um, They've been working with groups like Reuters and others to capture data at, at point of journalistic interface, you know, at the point of taking pictures or of, of, of interfacing with, um, with like live reporting work, capture the metadata about pictures that are taken, record that on blockchains, record it using content addressing so you can prove that the image created on device is the same image being stored on a blockchain, is the same image that you then later include into a, a, a website or something like that. Um, they've used this in a couple of amazing places. One is with the 2020 US primary elections, where they documented uh, a ton of voting booth data and pictures of people lined up around and around and around blocks and corners trying to participate in the primary. Um, they worked really closely with the USC Shoah Foundation, Stanford Engineering, and Reuters um, in order to collect and preserve this archive. They've also been working most recently with the um, UK Ukraine crisis, where they've been documenting imagery and proof of war crimes um, in, you know, on scene in, uh, I think this was Kiev. Uh, and it's just like, you know, super, super powerful. They've now submitted this as a dossier to The Hague um, as verifiable data that can prove that it was taken in the time and place, um, you know, where, where these pictures were, and they can now submit that into a court of law and prove it over time. And this is time stamped into a ton of different blockchains, Filecoin, Polygon, a lot, near Ethereum, a number of others. I don't remember all of them off the top of my head, uh, but really recommend you go read the CNN article. It describes it in more detail. 
Um, and so they do this by, they collect a lot of metadata at the point of taking um, kind of like journalistic imagery. They fact check the data and include that metadata as well. They tag it and store all of the image data at the blockchain layer. Um, all of the adjustments, everything ends up as a verifiable record. And then you can say, include that in a website or include that in a court of law and show that entire proof over time. Um, a thing that really helps you here is Filecoin's proof of verifiable storage. You can see when data is timestamped into another network. You can have long-term storage deals where you can track on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. This data is continuing to be stored. Everyone can observe and verify it. And it's really the intersection of like proofs that you can, um, can check and verify the public observability that anyone has access to that and the decentralized auditing that's happening by different participants in the Filecoin network. So lightning through a couple of recent upgrades. Um, there's been a ton of increased activity on the IPFS gateway. This is one of the most heavily used tools when it comes to building different NFT marketplaces. Um, gateways are an intermediary between the IPFS network and bringing all of that content to HTTP, but still very, very good because all of the, the content addressing and IDs are included in the gateway link. So you can still validate that the data you get from a gateway is what you expect based on the content ID. I've seen a massive amount of, of increased uh, requests and activity here. It's also way faster to get data from IPFS. We've accelerated content discovery by like, I don't even know, um, 2x faster since the beginning of the year. I think even faster now that we're down to less than half a second, uh, which is pretty awesome. There's increased browser support for IPFS. Brave has had an embedded IPFS node for a long time now. It's Awesome, I highly recommend you use it. You can use your IPFS colon slash slash links wherever you want. Um, Opera also has support for this. And then uh, the companion, IPFS companion extension is used across many other platforms and there's work in progress to bring embedded nodes there as well. Um, highly recommend if you're not already running Brave, check it out, they're phenomenal. Uh, there's also been a lot of work so that even when you're hosting content inside of firewalls, um, say on your local home internet, that you can still host and, and distribute that content to other peers you connect to in the, in the internet. Um, this has been a lot of work happening by the libp2p team, which is the peer-to-peer -peer networking library used by Polkadot, Ethereum2, Filecoin, a ton of other groups. Um, and they've been doing a ton of work that helps equip all IPFS nodes with that connectivity. Uh, there's a new node type in the IPFS network called the network indexer. And this allows anyone who's hosting large amounts of data to offer very, very quick addressing and retrieval to that data um, by bridging these networks and these indexes. So it indexes all the content, say, stored in Filecoin, which is over 100 petabytes, and makes it accessible there. Um, there's automatic data repair and renewal in Filecoin. There's an awesome new storage auction. Um, so a lot of great stuff there. I'm just going to flip through these because I know I'm almost out of time. Things that are coming next, um, I think that's five main things. There's the Filecoin retrieval markets work, which is super exciting. Go check out Saturn. It's great. NFT.storage has a lot of amazing things on their roadmap, especially around decentralizing themselves even more. Um, there's endowments or uh, data preservation DAOs that are coming for really, really long-term uh, deals using the Filecoin virtual machine. There's a lot of work on large metaverse and uh, museums and movies, bringing those onto things like NFT storage, really prioritizing large data. And then also the Filecoin Green Project is doing some amazing work to make sure that we're also using green renewable energy as part of storing and persisting and proving all of this data exists. So you can check the slides there if you grab the thing. Otherwise, check out this roadmap for all of the, what is coming when. And feel free to message me on Twitter if you have any other questions or, or want to hang out. Thank you so much. I'll be over on the corner if you have any questions.